Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. I love the song we're focusing on today. Uh, hello, everyone. Well, thanks for watching. We're glad you're uh, here with us. We're uh, talking about that hymn, The Wonderful Words of Life. Uh, today. This, this has been one of my very favorites uh, for years it has. I, I think it's sort of a modern, uh, well, I say modern, but it's 1800s uh, version of Psalm 119, the, the chapter of, of Psalms that uh, speaks of the glorious gift of, of God's word to us. Uh, one of the things that makes this hymn so great is its singability. Uh, once you've sung it, it's, it's easy to remember. The words uh, kind of just fall into your mind and, and they really kind of hard to get out. Uh, once you sung it, it's easy to remember. Clearly, Philip P. Bliss, 1838 to 1876, knew exactly what he was doing when he wrote it. For sure, he used his background as an educator to, to influence many generations of singers over the course of the last century and a, and a half that have come since this song was first written. Bliss is well known for his uh, work with uh, evangelistic revival meetings uh, of the mid-19th century with leaders such as Dwight L. Moody and uh, Major Whittle. Uh, Bliss and his wife Lucy both joined these revival meetings as, as singers, leading the songs uh, of what would be known as the gospel era of hymnody. Uh, this genre of music was itself named for collect, from collections that Bliss compiled with Ira D. Sankey uh, with titles such as Gospel Hymns and Sacred Songs and Gospel hymns two, number two. The blisses define the era with a, a life on the road and, and the, uh, uh, with, you know, with the famous traveling evangelists of the time. Uh, they were sort of like uh, George Beverly Shea and Cliff Barrows with the Billy Graham Crusades. They would travel and lead the singing and those kinds of things. They traveled for revival services, uh, mostly in the Midwest and the Southern United States. Their travel served as the framework for uh, from, from which Bliss wrote many of his uh, hymns, the text, and the tunes. Now, Bliss had an interesting uh, life as a, a child and a young adult. Born in Pennsylvania, the industrious boy uh, spent his early years working and learning, and, and, and he received training in music from, from teachers such as William B. Bradbury, uh, whose well-known tunes include Jesus Loves Me and He Leadeth Me. From his training, Bliss eventually took on the, the roles of itinerant music teacher and composer and editor. He just traveled around doing these things. Uh, one can assume his training included the tools he needed to, to teach uh, music in the 19th century. And, and from this song, we can see how those tools worked out. Uh, Wonderful Words of Life puts on display Bliss's talents as a, as a composer and his ability to to sort of enliven worship, to bring uh, fresh life to worship. Uh, Bliss's talents, uh, and he's very what, good at this. Uh, he, what he would do is he would often write these songs for, for these evangelistic uh, services, these revival services. And, and, and what would happen was he would teach them as they were singing them. They would do them by, by rote. In, in other words, they couldn't have you know, fancy screens like we have up here, or they couldn't have, uh, you know, hymnals were hard to lug around as they went from, from town to town. So, so they would teach the words as they sang. And that's why Wonderful Words of Life and, and many other hymns of that era uh, are filled with examples of repetition. Uh, our, our worship this weekend is going to include a song that's similar to, to this one like that, where, where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. Uh, though the second line differs from the, the first by, by only one note, the, the final note, uh, it's almost an exact statement of the initial phrase. And the third line contains two, uh, two measure phrases that are exactly the same. And, and the refrain contains two phrases written almost note for note. Uh, the final musical form then becomes A, A, B, B, C, C. Now, now to me, as one who understands very little about uh, structure and music, uh, that means very little, but, but uh, uh, I, I am one, though, that I love music. And, and what I can tell you about this and, and this format, what it means is that, that it's, this song is easy to learn and easy to, 
to sing, which, which like I said, it's, it's good for me as one who's not very musical, uh, but loves music. Uh, in addition, the, the wonderful words themselves of the wonderful words of life became uh, a teaching tool that are deeply rooted in ear, voice, and, and mind of the singer. The, the phrase wonderful words is repeated throughout uh, this hymn a total of 18 times. And uh, the larger phrase, wonderful words of life, a total of 12 times. Uh, it's not just repetition that Bliss uses to reinforce the teaching of the text and tune. Uh, the poetic devices he uses also help to teach uh, the hymn. God's words are personified through, uh, throughout the hymn as, as teachers wooing us to heaven and, and offering pardon and peace to all. Bliss's creative use of alliteration is also very prominent throughout. These poetic devices were carefully chosen because they all add to the, to the narrative of the text and the singability of the tune. As a revival song leader, Bliss was obviously emphasizing the words of scripture and the, the subsequent gospel call that results from the hearing of these words. Uh, the singing itself became a sermon, uh, a part of the sermon. The words were directed towards a listener, towards the, the sinner, so to speak. And, and the sermon concludes with the simple prayer, Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. The call was to a deep relationship with the Lord. It's a call to holiness. It's no surprise this hymn has been included in almost every Methodist hymnal ever since it was written through the years. The wonderful words of life speak to our minds and hearts. They draw us closer to the Lord, draw us to that place where we can hear his whisper, as we've talked about in recent uh, devotionals uh, in recent days. Going back to Psalm 119, listen to what David said about the wonderful words of life. This is from verses 97 to 104. He said, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me how sweet, and listen, to this, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Wonderful words of life, the wonderful words that draw us closer to Jesus, closer to the Lord. Jennifer's going to lead us in this, uh, this great hymn. Now, it's interesting, it's, it's kind of a shame that uh, Bliss did not write more uh, hymns, wonderful hymns, uh, texts, and tunes. He wrote some, but his life was cut short at age 38 as he and his wife Lucy were involved in a train wreck near Ashtabula, Ohio. Uh, they were on their way to Chicago to, to assist in evangelistic services there with uh, Major Whittle. Uh, according to the Canterbury Dictionary of Hymnology, they, they say it is believed that Bliss escaped the crash, but the carriage has caught fire and he returned to try to save his wife. Even in the last moments of his life, they served as an example of one who followed the gospel call, as one who was devoted to faith and duty. Uh, Bliss spent his last efforts helping his wife, Lucy. What a beautiful thing. Well, let's sing this uh, uh, wonderful song, Wonderful Words of Life.
pray together. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful words of life. Your word, your you know, scripture, Lord, we thank you for that gift that brings us all that we need in life. We thank you for, for in it, your Holy Spirit visits us and, and we, we experience joy, we experience love, we experience everything that we need in life through your word. Thank you, Lord, for them. They, they change us. Your word is living and active. Your word is well, it's just everything we need it to be. Thank you, Lord. We, we praise you for that. And we, we thank you for this song. We thank you for Philip Bliss and his ministry and, and his writing of it. And it, it's kind of a simple tune, but, but I know every time I hear it, it just draws me closer to you. And Lord, that's our desire, is that we would all draw closer to you, that we would love you more, that we would be able to hear your words when you speak them to us, Lord. Thank you for just this tune, for this blessing that it is. Mostly thank you for, for yourself. Thank you for inviting us into a place of, of intimate fellowship, of worship, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we do lift up those that are uh, dealing with the coronavirus right now. As there's word come today of more in our county that are experiencing this disease, Lord, we just pray your blessing on them. Be with the doctors and nurses and first responders, Lord. Uh, just be with us all. We, we, need, we need more of you in these days, these difficult days. As the, our, our nation needs you, Lord. We, we uh, just continue to call us back. We need revival to come across our land. We need healing. Uh, Lord, be with uh, this situation with, with uh, the racial problems that we're having, Lord. Help us to, to, first of all, look to you and, and to find that healing through you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we also, we look forward to this weekend meeting together. And we pray that you will be in our midst. We pray that you will lead us in that time. And Lord, keep us safe. Uh, thank you that we can meet together in person. Uh, we can also meet together online. We thank you that you are present even when we're together online. So, Lord, we just, just uh, want to celebrate you this weekend. Thank you, Lord. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Well, like I said, we are meeting together this weekend on Saturday night at 5 o'clock here in the, the Fellowship Hall. Uh, be sure and you're welcome to come and join us if you'd like. It'll be on uh, online as well. We're going to meet on Sunday morning as well at 1030, but uh, it'll be on online about that time as well. So uh, uh, you, you can join us either way. We've taken precautions. The seats are already kind of set up here, uh, spaced apart, and we've, uh, we've got sanitizer at the doors. We've got some signs just to remind you. We want this to be a safe place uh, where we can meet together, where we can worship together, and uh, I, I think it's going to be good. I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, many of you have not seen for several months now, and so it'll be good to be together uh, in that way. But, but again, I, I just want to be very clear. If you decide to stay home, it is perfectly fine with me. I want you to be comfortable, and there's no, uh, uh, I, I don't want you to, to feel like you have to come. Uh, we really want those, especially uh, that are in that age group where they have a, a higher risk or have uh, some of the, the things that kind of compound the effects of, of the coronavirus, but uh, uh, we, we just want, want everybody to worship together, and we'll do that online. We'll do it in person this week. So, hey, you have a great weekend. And we'll hope to, to see you in one way or another on uh, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.